Pie. I'm TNT, and we're just two dope black women tasting, discussing, and spilling tea over wine. Over wine. So, happy Women's Month again. We'll be saying that throughout the whole month of March. Um, we have a special episode for you guys today talking about some different type of topics. But before we do that, let's get into our review. Yes. Today we are going to be reviewing the Apothic Calf, which is a red wine, um, which we'll be talking about now. So Apothic Cab is a part of the Apothic Wine brand. This specific type was made by a winemaker by the name of Debbie Jurgensen um, of Apothic Wines in Central Valley, California. It is a 2019 Cabernet Sauvignon um, with a 13.5 alcohol percentage. Um, tasting notes of silky blackberry and mocha. So we special we chose this wine today to review because it's National Women's Month, and this one was actually made by one of their women winemakers. Winemakers. There we go. Uh, so just a little background on her. She started her career as a geologist and a researcher. So she does have like that scientific background that she was able to offer. Um, into winemaking, so that makes it a little bit different. So her story is inspired by Apotheca, a mythical place where wine was blended and stored in the 13th century in Europe. Apothic wines are made from a unique blend of grapes to create intense aromas and bold flavors. Um, the winery's first limited release, Apothic Cab, packs intensity, fruity flavor, and quite nicely balanced tannins. So that's what we have to look forward to. This one, which is a fun fact for it, is actually blended with a little bit of Zinfandel, which delivers Ooh. complexity of Cabernet with a billowy tannins and silky finish. Oh, the color is so pretty. It's like, it looks like, um, it's not as dark as a normal cat. Mm -mm. It's a uh, berry. It looks like berries, like berry juice, like ah, oh, like a uh, cran raspberry. That's yeah, so it's supposed to give off like jammy dark fruit. So when you smell it, it does like smell like jam. 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 <laughs> oh, jam. Oh yeah, I can smell it. It does smell like a uh, strawberry jelly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, let's taste it. This color is beautiful. Mm. I like it. It's sweeter than I expected it to be. Mm -hmm. It's not sweet like um like a sweet red, but when it first hits your tongue, it has that sweet like a like strawberries or like yeah, like a sweet strawberry. And blackberry. It's really good. It tastes like, like fruit. Like, and I know wine, you know, is fruit. Fruit in a glass. In a glass. <laughs> but it literally tastes like fruit. Bravo, Apothic. This is a great, this might be my favorite Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm, I like it. That's a statement. Mm -hmm. It is very good, though. It is really bold. It's not, the wow. tannins are not very high. Mm -hmm. I don't get that in this one. Um, compared to the cab that we reviewed last That's time, mm -hmm. it's just like top show. Yeah, this is good. This is very good. It's not, um, if you are scared of red wines, this is a good one to transition to because it's a perfect middle ground between the dark, super heavy tannin red wines and one that's more on the lines of a sweet red. This one is good. I think you guys will enjoy this. It is very good. And it has 13.5% alcohol. Yeah, so it's going to pair, you know, but for the people who are watching this video and didn't see the one last week, it's going to pair well with cheddar cheese, gorgonzola cheese, uh, walnuts, venison, beef of any kind, especially a ribeye steak. One of my personal favorites. That would be really good with a steak. Yes, this is so good. This wine is good. This... I have had a lot of Cabernet Sauvignons, and to date, those are fine for me. I'll drink them. They're not my favorite, but this would have to be my favorite Cabernet Sauvignon so far. Um, tuna, I eat tuna. Black cherries, which, ooh, that would be really good with some cherries. Like if you just, 
You know, we like to eat and drink if you want to keep it healthy on the fruit side. Tomatoes, broccoli, rosemary, juniper, lavender, brown sauces, tomato sauces, vanilla. This one goes really well with vanilla. When I was uh, looking this one up, that shocked me because a lot of Cabernet Sauvignons don't, don't pair. They don't say you pair it with vanilla, but this pairs well with vanilla because I think it was like some hints or notes of vanilla or something. And bittersweet chocolate. So this is really good. I would love to have this with some chocolate covered cherries. That's, yeah, that's what I was thinking too. That'd be good. Or chocolate covered that. strawberries. Yeah, yeah, this would be good. Super good. And it's like, mm. it's giving like top shelf, like mm -hmm. expensive wine taste on your palate. But I don't think I went over the pricing. It's ranging from like nine to $11. So this is more so like an affordable, yes. bold dinner party Cabernet, if you're having like a dinner party, you're having like a steak or whatever, this would be a really good one to give to your guests. It is. This is a good one. I like this one. I enjoy this one a lot. I, I want to try to, I want to pair this up with um, a steak with some broccoli, maybe like a, a, a garlic mash. Yeah. Oh, um, this is going to be good. A good garlic mash. Yes, yes go definitely. Or mashed potatoes with brown gravy on top. That would hit them all. This is good. Yeah. Like and it. it does have a silky finish. Mm -hmm. It's super smooth. It doesn't burn going down. You know, some wines, you can taste the acidity in it. And those tannins are heavy. This one is like, it goes down like water. And then, but it don't taste like water. No, no, no. It's just, <laughs> that means that it goes down smooth and easy. Down our throat, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And we found this one at our local grocery store. You can order this mm -hmm. online. I'm, Apothic is a popular brand, so you should be able to find it at your local grocery store as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's Apothic Cat. For today, we're only reviewing one. Yes. And speaking of silky finishes, uh, we're going to go into our next segment, uh, the tea bag in honor of National Women's Month. Uh, we're going to be talking today a little bit about uh, that walk. <laughs> now with vaginal health um, me and TNT will be giving you some tips on things that we do to make sure we keep the wop uh, intact intact um, the vagine yes a, the, a nice vagine the vagine regime regime the vajayj regimen the uh, pocketbook we're talking about the vagine the vajayj health vaginal health today and vaginal yeah, hygiene so a lot of um, women who truly and sincerely care about their vaginal health are always constantly concerned about their pH balance. And so um, for those of you who don't really know or don't understand or you um, don't have a vagina, um, your pH balance is very important because it controls your vaginal health. It's the determining factor of how healthy your vagina is, right? So when your pH balance is off, you know, it won't only cause baby odors or abnormal discharges or itching or discomfort or sometimes pain, but um, having your pH balance be thrown off in any way, shape, fashion, or form, it could be a form of insecurity as well for women. You know, because a lot of times, one of the things that I really don't like and I don't appreciate is when people talk about how a woman smells. Because a lot of times, um, that can be a, a predisposed health condition. It could be a genetic disorder. It could be anything that causes a woman to have what some people consider a vaginal odor. So I really don't like when people, you know, kind of go on, whether it be social media or tell other people like, oh, she she thinks she got an odor. She smells like fish. She smells whatever. Because to me, I feel like, you know, if you feel that strongly about a woman's vaginal health, maybe put her to the side and talk to her. I know for some people, it won't be as welcoming, but you know, maybe you could, can. So I've always done a lot of research and Kai does a lot of research about things that we can do to keep our vaginas healthy and um, keep our pH balance intact. And I have some, we have some very uh, easy to get things, some unconventional things, some tips that um, have personally come from my gynecologist and her gynecologist. So uh, we just hope that you guys in TikTok. Oh, and, <laughs> oh, and TikTok. We hope that you guys um, find this information useful. We hope that um, if you haven't already been trying some of these, you do try some of these because a lot of times it could be so taboo 
to have that conversation with someone and say, hey, you know, I don't like how I smell because everybody want to be wet and taste like water and smell like nothing, you know. But one of the things that people don't understand is the vagina has a natural odor to it. Now that odor shouldn't be foul smelling, it shouldn't be fishy, but you know, some women's natural vagina odor smells sweet, like candy. Like some women, you know, it's just, it depends on who you are, but there are some things that you can do to help you with that, that are not gonna break the bank because I have some things for cost saving as well. And um, you know, it's not gonna throw your pH balance off because a lot of times we're scared to try new things because we don't want to disrupt our pH balance. but. Do you guys know what one of the number one pH unbalancers or imbalancers is? What's one of the number one pH imbalancer? I know him. Yeah. <laughs> Sperm, semen. That's one of the number one things that'll throw your pH balance off, so having sex. So since we're gonna have sex, let's talk about some things that will keep our pH balance intact. Cool, cool, see. So I know it's more so like the educational. I am all for, I want to look good, I want to smell good, I want to be good, and I want to be wanna devoured. Good. I want to smell <laughs> She wants to taste good, I'm, and that's okay. I'm here for the things, okay? And that's okay. We all want to smell good, and you know, we don't want to have to use heavy perfumes to mask an odor because that's also harmful. So um, what do you have for some, let's talk about some things that, uh, you shouldn't do when it comes to keeping your pH balance intact. Um, some things I choose not to do. I do not use like fragrance, um, fragrance soaps, mm -hmm. bath things. Um, that's important, and she's actually accurate. Um, that's actually accurate, I should say. Um, when it comes to a lot of women, like to use these um, body sprays and these vaginal deodorant sprays oh, like, vagicil. like vagicil and things yeah those scented things that you think are making you smell good could be the cause of you not smelling good so anytime you have to take something that's fragrance to try to make you smell good you're covering up some odor that you're trying to get rid of now not everybody because there are a lot of women out there who have never had pH imbalance issues in their whole entire life. They can bubble bath, they can douche, they can do um, scented tampons, which I still don't understand a scented tampon. They can do all that kind of stuff and it doesn't bother them at all. There are some people who- It's called resilient coochie. It is, <laughs> it's resilient coochie. And there are some women out there who even spray their panties with perfume. That would destroy me. That's making me itch right now. <laughs> it would destroy, it would be painful for me. So um, to full transparency, I have had a history of um, issues with my pH balance being imbalanced. I'm very sensitive. So anything throws off my pH balance. So there's a list of things that I have to do to keep it intact. Oh, so we're talking about the things that you shouldn't do. Um, this is very controversial. A lot of people are either on either side of the fence when it comes to douching. Now, I will say this, I don't, my gynecologist does not recommend it, but he did say if all else fails and you absolutely have to douche, you should be mixing your own concoctions. So he said for BV issues, you would mix peroxide with a distilled water and it's just like a little bit of peroxide to distill water, and then you can flush your system out with that. That's good for people with BV issues. I don't think douching is um, as common it. anymore. It's not, because there's other, because we've all learned that there are things that you shouldn't do. And then also the, uh, that was just one that he was like for certain people, you know, that he would recommend, but he doesn't recommend it for everybody. So talk to your, anything that we're recommending, Talk to your gynecologist or your healthcare professional first. And that should be at the top things. of the list for right. having a walk. You should definitely have a yep. gynecologist. Yep. Um, that's definitely at the top of my list yeah. of things that you should do to maintain your vaginal health. Um, another one is drinking water. Yes. <laughs> uh, your water intake is definitely key. I personally drink or attempt or get very close to drinking a gallon of water a day. Um, so I'm definitely good on that part. And then having, um, making sure you're staying away from like 
all of those things. If you are sensitive, like the fragrances, um, the lace underwear that doesn't have the cotton lining, um, yeah. all those uh, having multiple sexual partners that you're having unprotected oh, sex that's with, a good one. like having all of those things at the top of your list to make sure that sits down there is good to go right because if you are going to have multiple sexual partners there are some things that you can do but there's one more thing that i want to say don't do or it's not recommended because you can do whatever you want to do but it's not recommended to wash your undergarments your panties if you're a panty wearer with fragrance detergent and i know you guys love those little scented pearls and you're washing and you're drying but those actually can be causing ph imbalance issues for you so if you use a like a all free and clear with no perfumes no dyes and then you can follow that with a fabric softener that has no perfumes or no dyes either because anytime you're adding those fragrances you can be throwing yourself off so uh those are some things oh i got another good one when you work out because we work out you have to take off your wet gym clothes as soon as you can. So you shouldn't be keeping those clothes on longer than it takes for you to leave the gym and get home. You should be peeling those off right away because that moisture can cause issues with yeast infections. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that. So um, like for me, when I work out, one of the first things I do after I get done working out is I strip. I take those clothes off. I get in the shower or sometimes if you don't, if you can't get in the shower, because let's be realistic, every time after you get done working out, some people have, you know, they can't just jump in the shower right away. So one of the pro tips that I used to do when I would be going to the gym and then I had errands to run afterwards, I would bring a, a, a clean pair of underwear to the gym and different pants. So I would take off my workout pants, my underwear that I worked out in, because some people don't work out in underwear, but some people do. And I would put in, yeah, and I would put on a dry, new, clean pair of underwear so that I'm not creating that moisture. And then like another thing that you could do um, too, is just try as hard as you can to keep the area down there as, and I know this is gonna sound weird, as dry as possible, because your dryness of your vagina has nothing to do with keeping the area dry <laughs> that area has to be dry your moisture comes from within <laughs> all right let's get into some of the things that they're looking at here right. so these are some of our pro tips um some products that we use to make sure we're keeping things intact do you want to go over your yeah so let's start from 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 um the outside uh so honey pot um i remember um finding out about honey pot a couple of years ago from Kaya's father's sister, her auntie, she was kind of telling us, hey, if y'all ever use this honeypot stuff, it's by a black, it's black owned. The young lady who created this, it came from a recipe that her grandma used to share with her for how they used to, you know, clean their vagina, their areas or whatever to keep their pH balance intact. And it's so funny because when I, when she, when the young lady who introduced us to it told us about it, I took the ingredients to my gynecologist because I'm one of those people that I'm scared to use new products. So um, I took it to my gynecologist and when he read the ingredients, he said, oh my God, this is amazing. He was like, I need to start recommending this to my other clients because this totally has the ingredients to keep your pH balance intact because one of the number one ingredients in this is apple cider vinegar. And we all know that apple cider vinegar helps. So you can start by washing with honey pot um, and something else that, okay, so a lot of women have issues with trying to keep their pH balance intact and they want to do something, right? So a lot of people do the vaginal steamings and all these things, but one of the things that you guys have been raving about is vaginal vitamins. Have you heard of vaginal vitamins? I'm not. Okay, so vaginal vitamins are these suppositories. So it's not a vitamin that you would necessarily swallow. It's a vitamin that you would insert into your vagina, right? So one of the things that I was interested in when I was looking at Honey Pot products is this is supposed to be a, a suppository that keeps your pH balance intact. So after you have sex, after your menstrual cycle, these are things that you can use when you know you have that semen in there to go up in there and clear that all out. Or after your menstrual cycle, some women have issues clearing all of the blood out after their menstrual cycle. So this helps 
keep your pH balance intact by doing that. So I took the ingredients of this to my doctor too. And he said, oh yeah, this is absolutely gonna work. And I said, oh really? He said, yeah. I said, why? He said, because the main ingredient is boric acid. So one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is when you are buying those vaginal vitamins, the pill that you're gonna insert into your vagina, they tell you however many times a day, those vaginal vitamins that you're buying can cost you upwards of 45 to $60. Did you guys know that that's just boric acid? It's literally a boric acid pill that you insert into your vagina, or you can get a boric acid suppository. Or the sophisticated ratchet way that I do. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't like necessarily sticking the pill up, one, because it often falls on the floor, and I'm not putting nothing in the floor mm -hmm. in my vagina. You know, you just be fun. I'm not gonna get into it. Anyway. <laughs> So I would use like I would take a tampon. I would you know this you know open it, pull it up, take the tampon out, use the tampon applicator, oh. put my pill in there. So then you have like a suppository pretty much. Put the pill in the tampon applicator and then use that to insert that into my vagina. That's really smart. I'm gonna do you one better. They have boric acid pill applicators. On Amazon, I do. And they're I about like five dollars. Yeah, on Amazon, it's a little. Um, if you've ever had to insert, oh, let me see. Oh, this is empty. <laughs> <laughs> I use them, so you know, I use the products. I use them all. This the applicator not in here. It's like a little long thing that you buy. You put the pill in there, and when you stick it in your vagina, you push it in, like and it like a tampon, and it puts the pill in there. So, um, you can get. A regular boric acid, excuse me, 30 count of pills for like maybe five to ten dollars on I Amazon. Off of Amazon. Mm -hmm. Um, this was like a recommended brand, and I think I paid about seven bucks for these. So it's the exact same thing that you're paying 45 to 60 dollars for. For and I'm I do I'm sorry because you know I'm always I'm frugal. I'm going to find the cheapest way to do everything. And I've been, I was researching these vaginal vitamins and I'm like, it's nothing but boric acid. This is the exact same thing that my doctor told me that I can just go get a cheap boric acid pill and stick it in there. So I'm going to help y'all save some money. And I often use my boric acid anytime when I feel like, well, usually after my period, I will uh, use it for, you know, a night or two, depending on how I'm feeling. And anytime I sense like something off, you know how you get that feeling like, okay, something not right. Or you smell an odor, like use your boric acid suppository. It works wonders. It's really like a miracle pill. It is. Um, if you struggle with bacterial vaginosis, um, which a lot of us women do or have in the past, mm -hmm. boric acid would be your best friend. If you usually get issues after having sex. Definitely use a boric acid afterwards. Um, so it's pretty much just like keeping your vagina clean, intact, getting all of the unnecessary bacteria and things out of there. Yeah, and another pro tip, after sex, actually I think before and after sex, pee. pee. Because that can be the difference between you getting a urinary tract infection and not getting a urinary tract infection. You should always be peeing either before and after sex or definitely after sex. So go ahead and clear out that uh, urinary tract. But then I have a couple of other tips, so I'm just gonna read some of those off. Um, no panties. A lot of women are on the no panty movement. And I'm getting there, I'm, I'm working up to that because you know some of us have issues with a lot of moisture, where I mean, this is us ladies talking, I'm gonna be very transparent. I have a lot of moisture. So for me, I could literally not wear panties, get up and there be a whole wet spot on of the seat that I was sitting in. So for me, I'm working my way to the no panty thing. But for me, no panties is uh, still something that I'm, I want to do, but I'm trying to figure out how to make that work for me. But if you are going to wear panties, make sure the crotch is cotton because the satin panties and everything are cute, you know, but when it comes to your vaginal health, you want to use cotton. Um, so what else do we have? I have uh probiotics 
Probiotics. Pro oh, okay. Probiotics actually, and one of the best probiotics for making for women who suffer with chronic yeast infections, one of the best probiotics is acidophilus. Acidophilus is one of those pills, and it's weird how it works. Because I'm like, how does that work? So one of the things that my doctor explained to me is that the bacteria of the probiotic gets into your gut and it cleans everything up in there. And then when you have a bowel movement, it helps to clean out your system in some type of way or whatever. So it's not necessarily you're taking the probiotic and inserting it in your vagina. Don't do that. Swallow your probiotic, insert your boric acid. So that's a tip. Um, also, uh, panty liners. A lot of women like to use panty liners because some women are just extra moist. And when women talk about WAP and having an extra wet ass pussy, that's real. So a lot of women have to wear panty liners to catch some of that moisture so that they don't are not always uh, like extra wet down there, which will cause the yeast to uh, overgrow and cause yeast infection. So Honey Pop makes some really good panty liners. So these are also specifically made to keep your pH balance intact. So these are some good ones, some good panty liners, you know. If you know, we don't know, this is a panty liner, super thin, kind of like a pad, but you know, super thin that you can, you know, put in your underwear. And, oh, this is one of the most unconventional things my doctor has ever told me. And this is my last pro tip. And then I'll let you give some if you have any more to add. My doctor um, is all about uh, organic, natural um, things that you don't have to use chemicals for. So for you ladies out there who are willing to try anything because you suffer with chronic yeast infections, my gynecologist recommends taking plain yogurt. And plain yogurt that you eat. The plain yogurt that you eat. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. You know the things that you administer baby's medicine with? Those things that you just pull up? The syringe. Getting plain yogurt, don't get a flavored yogurt, because I'm sorry, that'll mess you up. But plain yogurt, and not Greek yogurt, because Greek yogurt is too thick to pull into the syringe. But you just want some plain Dan and plain yo play. And then you put that in the syringe, maybe one of the five milligram baby ones, and then you insert that in your vagina before you go to sleep. He swears by it. He says it is better than any yeast infection cream that you could ever use. So, a. <laughs> Do with that as you will. <laughs> and all of these tips. So my couple of tips that I've been trying out and using, because right now in 2022, I'm like all about, let me see what I can do for my vagina. Um, so I've been trying out like different type of menstrual, um, you know. I'm Disc like, and cups. Disc and cups and oh, trying to figure yeah. out like, how do I want to do it with my menstrual cycle. That's a good one. Um, and I also been trying to figure out like, okay, what can I do to, you know, intense, like make sure my sis is good down there. So one of the things I found from TikTok is uh, chlorophyll water. So I've been actually using chlorophyll water for about two to three months now. And what contributing to the WAP is just like a cherry on top because it does have pretty much chlorophyll, you know, you find that in all of your leafy vegetables. Mm -hmm. So if you do eat a lot of leafy vegetables, you probably don't need to take chlorophyll water, I mean, chlor liquid chlorophyll, um, because they say you'll get the same amount if you eat like a bowl full of spinach or whatever. But this is a quick way to get it in. Like I just pour it, fill the syringe, pour it in my water, down that, and it's supposed to help with like skin, uh, digestion, overall wellness. But I didn't know it would help, you know, sis get like super whoppy when it's walk time. Okay. <laughs> so I, that was an added bonus. And that's something I found out with this. Definitely trying it. Um, I eat a lot of spinach, but I also believe in supplements because, you know. You never know. <laughs> Uh, something else that I'm new to trying is a uh, slippery elm. Oh, slippery. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the word is in the in the title. Right. <laughs> the things are there. Wow. So uh, one of the things I did order these off of Amazon. Uh, I'm using it and trying it out for two purposes. It does supposed to help with digestion, which I usually have problems with, and it also will help you get that 
caution with wet, slippery type of things going on, okay? So I will give you a review on this once I've been taking it for a while. I literally just started like a week ago, so I don't have a major review. But I have noticed, noticed some differences, but I would want to give a full review once, you know, right. my trial is up. And a lot of these things are very important for women who are a little bit older like myself because as we're reaching the age, older age, we're starting to approach menopause. And one of the things that I didn't know, but I'm starting to do research on and find out, and I'm not necessarily having the issue with this, but I always want to make sure that um, I'm always going to stay as moist as possible when it comes to, you know, my vaginal health, um, is that as women get older, uh, we're not as moist as we were. Vaginal dryness. Vaginal dryness, right. And so um, another thing that my doctor recommends is uh, coconut oil. And we use coconut oil for everything. And my doctor told me about this. And my doctor is a white man, y'all. So it's not like it was a black woman like, girl, coconut oil. He a white man. He said that coconut oil is a great lubricant for sex. And for uh, women who are getting older and experiencing vaginal dryness, he said take a little bit of the coconut oil, let it melt in your hand, and rub it around your lips of your vagina, around the outside, and just kind of around the you know, the folds, because when a woman is experiencing vaginal dryness, it's very uncomfortable inside your, you know, panties and stuff. Your just vagina is uncomfortable, right? Because what we don't realize is that that moisture, that mucusy moisture helps keep us comfortable. Yeah. So that's a good tip too. Um, so coconut oil, who knew? I, mean, I was using it for my hair and I my think body. coconut oil is popular mm -hmm. as a lubricant, but maybe just not in a heterosexual Oh, um, okay. Community, right? So you know, out there buying the like, like what Rihanna called the the lubes lip gloss. <laughs> she she ain't got to put lip gloss on it. Use coconut oil, and it's also uh, safe to use with condoms because some things can break a condom, but coconut oil is safe to use, and it's not gonna throw off your pH balance. All right. Well, that's our segment for today for yes. vaginal health. Um, definitely leave in the comments if you have any other your personal pro tips that may help some other people or help me get this. Like I wanna So know. make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And like Akai said, add some of your tips in the comments and let us know. Try some of these things and then come back in the comments and let us know if it helped you because we want every woman out there to feel confident in her vaginal health and not be insecure when it comes to odor because a lot of people experience it. New thing that we're gonna call TNT's explosive thoughts. So just like, you know. <laughs> so it's just like a little quick, you know, fun, you know, thing, question or whatever. So uh, one of the questions that I have this week is, people are always talking about what's better than sex, right? So you got like a better than sex cake. Um, you got better than sex chocolate. So I thought about that one day and I'm like, everybody always saying stuff is better than sex. So I wanted to know, and y'all can go ahead and put it in the comments. What do you think is better than sex? Is there anything that you think is better than sex? Some of the things that I would consider better than sex, one, I'm not, I don't consider myself like a super, super sexual person. So like sex is like, I mean, I could do it. <laughs> That's how I usually feel about it. I, it's not nothing against the man at all, but it's just like, I can take it or leave it. Oh, okay. So, for me, things that excite me other than sex is money, <laughs> a trip, I, uh, sex on the trip would probably be nice. <laughs> but yeah, I like I, those two things. I love her answers because nothing. Nothing for you? Nothing is better than sex for me. And that's the reason why I wanted to know, what do people think is better than sex? Because for me, nothing. It's everything for me. All right. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us. And don't forget to subscribe and share this video with other people. All right. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>